Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Over 70,000 Maasai face expulsion in Tanzania. Three soldiers killed in Israeli airstrike on Syria. Report finds racial disparities in Canada's parole system. And New Zealand nurses gear up for major strike action. In our first story, over 70,000 indigenous Maasai people are facing expulsion from their lands in northern Tanzania. The area in question is 1,500 square kilometers of registered ancestral lands in the Loliondo division. The government has now revealed a plan to allot this land to the UAE-based Oterlo Business Corporation. According to the Oakland Institute, the company will control commercial hunting in the area. The planned allotment is taking place despite a 2018 injunction by the East African Court of Justice. The order was issued in the aftermath of violent government-led expulsion in 2017. As reported by Mongabe, the decision will impact 15 villages in Loliondo. The land itself is crucial for Maasai pastoralists who depend on it for grazing areas and water resources. Since January, Hundreds of Maasai people have been holding protests against the land project. People in the Malambo village were able to successfully push back forest rangers who were setting up border beacons in the area. The expulsion of the Maasai from Loliondo is reportedly part of a bigger government plan to resettle communities from the region. This is being done to make way for conservation, tourism and hunting. Another 80,000 Maasai in the Ngorongoro conservation area are also at risk of forced relocation. Over 700 Maasai gathered in the Oloirobir village on February 13th to protest the imminent expulsion threat. In our next story, at least three Syrian soldiers were killed in an Israeli airstrike near Damascus on February 24th. The Syrian Arab News Agency reported that the country's air defense intercepted most of the missiles. Thursday's strike was the fourth such reported attack by Israel in this month alone. The Syrian military stated on February 23rd that missiles had hit target in the border province of Kunaitra, causing material damage. The strike was launched from the direction of Lake Tiberias across the occupied Golan Heights. The attacks were confirmed by Israeli forces. They reportedly stated that they had warned Syrian forces not to collaborate with Lebanon's Hezbollah. Israel claims that the group is a threat given its opposition to the occupation of Palestine and its support for President Bashar al-Assad. Israel has carried out hundreds of unprovoked attacks on Syria since the war broke out in 2011. Hundreds of civilians and Syrian armed personnel have been killed. Israel often uses Lebanon's airspace for these attacks in violation of international law. It also rarely acknowledges these attacks and claims that they are defensive operations against Iranian and Hezbollah operations. The Syrian government has rejected these attacks as an attempt to help rebel forces and prolong the war. Now we take a look at an investigation in Canada's federal prison data which has revealed racial disparities in the ability to receive parole. The Globe and Mail analyzed figures for male prisoners over a seven-year period. It found that indigenous men were 26% less likely than their white peers to be paroled in the first year they were eligible. Black men were 24% less likely, and men from other racialized groups were 20% less likely. These numbers hold true even after controlling for factors like age, sentence length, severity of offense, and risk assessment. At the center of these disparities is the Correctional Service of Canada, or the CSC itself. The GLOBE investigation says that the odds are stacked further and further against racialized people at each step of incarceration. A 2020 inquiry had found that the CSC's risk assessment tools were systematically biased against black men and indigenous men and women. According to the Globe, most prisoners became eligible for parole for just a short period of one-third mark of their sentence. It found that 40% of white people in the first year of eligibility were already serving the sentence in the community. 
Meanwhile, indigenous people were only out for 21% of the time and black people are only out for 32% of the cases. Even after prisoners have been released, the conditions of supervision differ. In early 2018, half of all white prisoners serving the sentences outside were on full parole. The figure for black people was 41% and indigenous people at 29%. The report also examines how mechanisms of parole hearings and community assessments work against racialized people. And for our final stories, Allied health workers in New Zealand are gearing up for a major strike action. Organized by the Public Service Association, 10,000 workers will stage 24-hour walkouts on March 4th and 18th. PSA represents frontline workers including pharmacists, contact tracers, social workers and lab technicians. The strike has been planned just as New Zealand is witnessing a rapid rise in cases driven by the Omicron variant. It follows 15 months of unsuccessful negotiations with 20 district health boards. Over 90% of workers rejected a deal offered by these boards in December. They argued that it did little to address stagnating wages and rising inflation, which is now at 30-year high of 5.9%. Workers have also pointed to issues of delayed pay equity, settlements and understaffing. For example, Less than 4,000 laboratory workers were responsible for handling close to 6 million COVID-19 tests. Reports show that nearly one-third of lab workers did not receive the mandatory break between shifts. 62% of frontline workers surveyed said that half or more of their last 10 shifts were understaffed. Allied health workers are earning around 22.75 New Zealand dollars, which is barely above the $20 minimum wage. The last monthly employer collective agreement expired in late 2020. Wage progression has been frozen as negotiations have dragged on in the 15 months since then. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching.